Welcome to Behind the Bands, a show where we bring you a closer look at local musicians and artists performing in the four states. I'm your host, Yanelli Lopez, and today we have One Penny Shy, a duo from Fayetteville, Arkansas, composed of members Becky and Jacob. They bring infectious melodies, heart-filled lyrics, and a whole lot of love. So let's start by listening to one of their original songs called Loose Curls. <laughs> Becky and Jacob, how are you guys doing today? 
Good. Great. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm not too bad. All right. So um, when did the duo get started? We got started in 2020, officially. We had both played music separately, but 2020 was when One Penny Shy was born. Mm -hmm. I was writing a lot of songs. Jacob played a lot of guitar, and it just worked out. <laughs> Were you guys in sep like separate, like in a band, or just solo kind of artists? We, yeah, I've played in a bunch of bands in Fayetteville for many years, and Becky also has quite a bit of musical experience, and so we uh, started playing in a band together and mm -hmm. then sort of evolving from that band has become the duo of One Penny Shy. Well, we, we are a couple, so we spend a lot of time together, and it <laughs> honestly was just an outlet for us. Instead of performing under my own name, mm -hmm. you know, which I was doing for a while, I was like, what if I really just brought Jacob into this and we just became an actual, you know, duo inspired by the, the great duos out there, you know? So One Penny Shy, how did you go about picking that name? <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly not as much of a story as I would love for oh. it to be. We're going to have to was, make something up. <laughs> We're going to have to make something up. No, right. but it was 2020. Um, I guess there's a little story. There, it was 2020. Of course, COVID was happening. We couldn't play mm -hmm. a lot of music. And, you know, just we're both a little broke at that point. And so I'm thinking, like, what is a good duo name? We tossed around a few things. I just remember being in line at a drive-thru to get some food. And I called Jacob and I was like, hey what about one penny shy and he was like i sure. love it i checked it was the first gmail of that name so that was official then you're golden after that. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just talking about being rogue yeah. so do both of you guys come from musical families you can start <laughs> <laughs> i do i do okay. my mom is a music teacher which was my first job out of college as well um so i i grew up with her playing the piano she's a classical pianist and she's absolutely wonderful um so yeah music was always a big part of my life growing up I kind of have the opposite experience. <laughs> my, my family's not musical whatsoever. Uh, my dad used to say he could barely play the radio. Oh. Uh, but I, I don't know, I fell in love with music when I was a kid and I started playing guitar when I was a teenager and just kind of, it just all made sense. We so, both play piano and guitar and she does the ukulele and I play a couple of other things from time to time. Yeah. How'd you guys learn to start playing? Um, well, uh, I was 14 and needed an outlet. So that's when I picked up guitar. Um, as far as ukulele, I learned that officially when I started teaching, but I had studied guitar in college, so it was easy for me to just be like, yeah, I play ukulele, I can teach that, <laughs> and so it was pretty Absolutely. easy to transfer that. Yeah, I, I, I'm self-taught on the guitar too, but then I also studied music in college, and we actually met teaching music in Fayetteville. Yes. Oh, so you guys like taught in the, like, in the, in same, the, school? In the same yeah. school? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so how would you guys describe your music style for the audience? Um, I love to call it smooth vintage pop. The vintage is a call callback to, you know, the, the kind of vibe around loose curls and also the kind of covers we like to do when we play live. Mm -hmm. We love to do some older cover covers of like, you know, Nat King Cole and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Just some, some smooth vintage acoustic pop. Who would, who would you guys say are some of your influences? We have totally different influences between the two of us. So you start this. Okay, so <laughs> just just me personally. Uh, so I studied I studied jazz in college, and I, I wouldn't really call myself a, a jazz player, but I'm sort of influenced by that. And I really like sort of old soul and R and B. And then I also mm. have this whole other side of musical personality where I grew up is a lot of country and bluegrass, and so that kind of seeps its way yeah. in, in yeah, can, from time to time. I can see you guys in yeah. country, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I um, listen to a lot more of like the sort of pop route, indie pop, as well as, you know, some like pop punk. So you'll mm -hmm. hear me, if, if I'm in the car, I'm listening to either like Dermont Kennedy or Fall Out Boy, and there's really no in between. <laughs> like a little broad so, range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so this next song we're going to hear is called Dream Queen. Can you tell us about that? What's the story behind that? Yeah, so Dream Queen is very much inspired by not living up to the expectations that other people have for you. You know, whether it be a friend or a partner, just feeling like you are brought in under a pretense, maybe put on a pedestal, being thought mm -hmm. of as a dream queen of, of something so different than who you actually are. And then feeling like once you get your actual personality shining through, maybe not feeling quite as desired. So it's, it's kind of just that conundrum of like, making sure you're wanted for who you actually are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a listen to Dream Queen. I 
passions don't go well like eyes red velvet can't you tell i don't know what i'm doing no surprise i tripped and fell over your words under your spell you said where you been don't pull me close just to cut me off all because i'm not your dream queen i push my luck every time we talk thinking maybe you'll remember don't pull me close just to cut me off all because i'm not your dream queen i push my luck every time we talk thinking maybe you'll remember me Last impressions leave a scar you'll never change who you are and I stay the same always light eyes red velvet can't you tell you never loved and you never fell you just played the game don't pull me close just to cut me off all because I'm not your dream queen I push my luck every time we talk thinking maybe you'll remember don't pull me close just to cut me off all because I'm not your dream queen I push my luck every time we talk thinking maybe you'll remember don't pull me close just to cut me off all because I'm not your dream queen I push my luck every time we talk thinking maybe you'll remember me worried that you might forget me all right we are here again with one penny shy so what does the process of writing a song look like for you guys for us, I, I will say Becky is the principal songwriter of One Penny Shy. And so all the words that you hear, that's all Becky. And the musical process, what usually happens is Becky runs, we, you know, we're together and we mm -hmm. live together. So usually runs into the room and says, I wrote a song. <laughs> and so she comes, she comes with the kind of the, the skeleton, you know, and then we flesh it out together mm -hmm. sort of as a team. I don't know if you would think yeah, so. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just sit there and usually an idea will be coming to me, you know, I, I work from home, um, and so I'll just be sitting there thinking, and I'll be like, ooh, this sounds really good. I keep a ukulele by my desk. So I <laughs> pick it up, I start strumming some chords. Usually the words will come to me a little bit first, and I'll write like a verse, and then it just all sort of tumbles out from there, right? It's, it's very much a, a quick process for me. It's not a very lengthy, day-long <laughs> process. It usually takes me about an hour to two hours to write a song. And so, yeah, once that happens, once I have the chords and the lyrics, I run and tell him, and he makes the chords prettier. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely have the talent for writing. I feel like if I tried writing, it'd be like a year. Like, oh, I think of one no. word. But so. so I know, so I've actually heard some of your covers, and you guys do covers as well. Yes. Um, do you guys change, how do you guys go about changing, a, you know, a song type to fit mm -hmm. your guys' style? Um, it happens pretty naturally, I would say. Um, with especially with like what he studies and his influences coming from like the bluegrass and the jazz mm -hmm. I feel like that really you know you speak that through your guitar and then you know vocally it's it's pretty easy to add your own riffs and spins on certain things especially depending on the, the genre and how comfortable I am with the song how long I've known it so yeah having mm -hmm. one instrument or just or two instruments you mm -hmm. know like it imposes some limitations on you know what you can do clearly like we don't have any percussion stuff yeah. like that and so the way that we approach these songs is still trying to make it a full sort of song experience without having you know a whole band that is that is like tough especially you know some songs are mainly based off the of drums but you guys can mm -hmm. change in that's that's pretty cool um so does your originals when you write them do they have a certain theme or like a topic or what do you guys what do you like writing about i guess um yeah so it it, it truly depends um what I sadness, <laughs> misery. All of my songs are just sad. <laughs> Loose Curls is a fun song. That's the best song okay. to hear. Uh, right? <laughs> no. Um, so like yeah. Adele, sorry. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, no you're right. Adele. I love Adele. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's generally just that catharsis that I'm looking for, right? So if I have a big feeling, whether it's sadness or frustration, 
it's that's when the song is most likely to happen. I can sit down and write something like Loose Curls, but you, typically for a song like that, like a happy song, I do have to sit down and think like, I need to add a happy song to the set. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll have to like actually try to write that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and other otherwise, as far as vibe with the songs, I always try to have there be just a little bit of a fantastical element, like something to make it kind of sparkle and feel, yeah, just a, a little bit of fantasy, so. That's all. A lot of imagery, I guess. Yeah, it does produce that, which is a good thing, honestly. Oh, I mean, that's you. what songs need to do, I feel like, for me. <laughs> but, Thanks, yeah. So uh, when we talked, I know you mentioned you guys perform in Northwest Arkansas, Southwest Missouri, and I think also Kansas City. Was that, was yeah, just a, just a few times up in Kansas City, but we've played Is there, there a difference on the audience when you play in, like, I guess, different states, technically? Oh, there's a difference in audience from gig to gig, no yeah. matter where you are. It's so interesting. It's like having having played gigs for as long as we have mm -hmm. like both separate and together it's like you you walk into a room and like part of the fun of the gig is like figuring the crowd out yeah you mm -hmm. know uh what do they want to hear you know how loud does it need to be how quiet does it need to be <laughs> etc yep. etc especially you know we're playing a, a longer set that has a lot of covers you know we we do think about that it's for me, at least, it's impossible to say, like, this is what a hometown audience feels like versus, like, Casey or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we've had amazing experiences everywhere, and we've had other experiences everywhere, everywhere. as well, well too. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been a challenge trying to figure out the audience? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I feel like our set list is never static. Yeah. We are always, like, we're up there, and we're reading, like, what is making more people engage with us as we're playing and what people are obviously not as in tune with, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, like... We've got our, our set list, you know, just kind of off to the side, and we will, you know, split it out as needed, depending on who's reacting to what. Okay, so yeah, like you guys already have like a certain arrangement of songs though ready, or do you guys just begin? Oh yeah, so I've got, you know, like in, in my files, I have a one hour set, a two hour set, and a three hour set. And it's more of an outline, It's uh, as I said, it's never mm -hmm. static, it's never the same, but we do have them, you know, pretty much divvied out and arranged in a way where it's kind of got that ebb and flow, you know, where it's like the the more upbeat to start and then the, you know, so yes. yes you you create it. the flow on that. <laughs> Are the audience allowed to make requests? Depends. It does. Because sometimes we do take requests, but mm -hmm. if I don't know it, I'll just be like, girl, yeah, I don't know that. That's it. That's like, <laughs> I'll take requests unless I don't know how to play. Exactly. Then I will not. It's like, we want you to play this song. Yeah. But hey, you know, money talks, so. <laughs> Money, we'll is, try. money is important, obviously. We'll try our best. <laughs> so we do have another original called Older Now. Can you yeah. tell us the meaning of that song? That song is just about growing up. I wrote that um, about a year out of university, and uh, I was teaching at that point. I was teaching elementary music, K through 4, and it was just kind of figuring out. I was 22, 23, figuring out like, oh, wow, you know, life really just does keep rolling and like there's there's no stopping it and so it's always kind of a a pensive one to sing you know to, to mm -hmm. think about like you know the passage of time and it starts out with you know that being in school sort of feeling like you know maybe by the time we're free in may like we'll be able to run away that sort of a yeah. a vibe and then it just you know progresses from there into what it's like to age yeah. all right well then <laughs> let's take a listen to older now by one penny shy
could say that I went and bought a new name. Cause I went and bought a new name. with Becky and Jacob of One Penny Shy. So is this uh, more of a full-time or a part-time job? <laughs> <laughs> we, so we met as music teachers mm -hmm. and then we quit our teaching jobs and we, we did play music full-time mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, the pandemic. That's and so it was, it was really, it was tough to continue to, to do that. And, you know, shout out to all the musicians who, who are suffering and have suffered because of that. But uh, we ended up getting day jobs, for yes. sure. So this is, it's hard to call it a part-time job. I don't want to call it that, because yeah. it's not a job, you know. We, we love doing yeah. this. Um, of course, we, we like to, to, to pay to make money and play our gigs and stuff, yeah. but mostly it's, it's for yeah. the love, and so, yeah. but we do have day jobs. Yes. Um, the sad <laughs> part, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, of course, we know you traveled here in the Midwest area. Is mm -hmm. there any plans of going further out into the U.S.? You guys travel more? <laughs> we, we would go, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, uh, we don't have, probably have any immediate plans to do, like, a, you know, coast-to-coast -coast yeah. or, uh, like, a, you know, Japanese tour or something like that. But going uh, out of the U.S. or anything? Right? Hey, but, you know, if, if somebody called us and said, hey, jump on the show, you know. <laughs> we, we'd do we'd it. We'd do yeah. it, for sure. So what would you say are some of your biggest accomplishments as musicians so far? Um, I could just feel like the biggest accomplishment for me personally is just sharing my music in the live platform of like performing at mm -hmm. venues, you know, like it's something I always imagined doing as a young girl. Um, I've never really strived for anything bigger than that, you know, I've never really wanted to, to you know, have the fame or whatever, like I'm always wanted to be a writer and so what I'm doing right now I feel like it's a huge accomplishment for me is you know just getting over that initial fear that I had of like sharing that writing mm, you know it's yeah. all very personal so yeah I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. So I know you just said you don't like fame but so what are some of your future what are some are you guys hoping for the future for this duo like hopefully fame maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no honestly I just love being a regional act I would love to grow and have more people know our stuff mm -hmm. um, but you know I, I like where we are I think that what we're doing is really important and really good. I okay. agree and the the reality of, of being a national act these days is completely different you know Everybody thinks it. Everybody kind of has it in their mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, oh, you get discovered, and then you you hit play it on the radio, and then all of a sudden you're on the tour. But you know, these days it's Instagram and TikTok. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's 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 tough. It's tough to put yourself and your life out there like that to the extent that I think people kind of want you to to be famous yeah. these days. And yeah. so, I mean, you know, Becky said it better than I could. I think I, I'm. Frankly, I'm just not interested. Like, I, lo no. I love to play music, and, you know, my biggest accomplishment, I think, is just being able to play and, and being able to keep doing it, and people keep calling us, you know yeah. what I mean? And you, so do you guys have your own studio? How do you guys go about recording these songs? We don't have a home studio, mm -hmm. and we have, you know, we have a little bit of ability to record some demos and stuff like that mm -hmm. at home, but we have a guy down in, in Fayetteville, shout out, Austin, Austin Farnham. Austin Farnham, he's the uh, best. <laughs> a c former co-worker of ours, and he's a, he's a really good recording engineer, and he also does some videos. So anytime you see the, the sort of highly produced videos mm -hmm. in like a cool room with lamps and stuff, that's usually- A lot of lamps, yeah. Usually, <laughs> uh, I was doing with there. Austin, but yeah, for sure. Do you guys have a plan on creating your own studio? It'd be great, you know. It'd be cool. It's uh. It's all about gathering the gear. It takes time. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, money, right? Money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, is there any albums in the works, or mostly? I know you on Spotify. I think I was looking. And it's like singles and stuff. Is there albums? Yeah. So we've got an EP out on Spotify. It was our very first EP. That's actually very folk inspired. If if you're interested in listening to mm -hmm. that, um, we've got that out. Um, I, I will probably go with more of the structure of 
EPs and singles for a little while, yeah. um, just because of the sporadic nature of like how I'm writing right now at this point. Um, but yeah, who knows? Like I've got enough in the in the bag to make no, an, an album, yeah. so you never know. <laughs> I think I think I think we will. You think so? Yeah, I think you know in the in the next few years, you know, even if it's just another EP. EP. But like. Some of the songs that we've released, we need to put them like on a record, I think. Okay, then the answer is yes. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where can our audience go to see future events? Or even know more about the band you guys do? Yeah, um, well, you can see us all over. Um, we're playing, of course, in Fayetteville. Um, but yeah, you can always just look us up online, One Penny Shy. Instagram. And, um, Instagram, Facebook, those are our two main ones. So yeah. All right, and is the streaming services under, I'm assuming, under the same One Penny Shy. Mm -hmm. Everything, iTunes. just type in One Penny Shy. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So, of course, we do have one more song before we leave. Can you tell us about Secret Places? Secret Places? Go on. Tell them. <laughs> tell them. I'm a huge reader. I'm a big nerd. Um, I, I, I love books. And so this is honestly one of those that, um, one of the many songs I've written inspired by two characters in a book. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. They were in love, and it was just never meant to be. It's not the ship that, you know, the fandom kind of cool, wants. Though. I don't think I've heard someone write a book based off, or write a song based off of a book. That's I do interesting. it all the time. Yeah, it's it's very fun. I'm sorry, you guys <laughs> have, like, natural talent. That's all I'm oh, saying. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being here. I really Thanks, appreciate Nelly. it. Thank you, Nelly. Thank we appreciate you. you. Thank and you. that is today's show of Behind the Bands. I'm your host, Yanelli Lopez. And here's Secret Places, an original by One Penny Shy. Thanks for watching. Your shadow follows you around Just back from the lost and found You're from a different world